clematis. Oh, wow, I've never uh, seen what? it like it. Uh, you know, clematis is a garden the flower. vine. The flower, yeah. yeah this, is, this is wild clematis. They call it virgin's bower, too. It gets wild white clematis. flowers all over. Wild virgin's bower. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know they grew here. It was up Hanging over the down, tree. It kind of looks like a fishing pole. <laughs> yeah, look at it. It's all up here. It's over wow. that tree. When it blooms, okay. little puff balls here. And puff balls are, are edible when they're young and, and white all the way through. Okay. They're pretty good, actually. Boys get in the end. We are just that. planting mushrooms. Yes. <laughs> just spread them around. Here we go. Puff same balls. thing. Yeah, same, same idea. It's called what again? Uh, hair cap moss. Mm -hmm. Hair cap moss. Yeah, I see a lot of You can see the two different species. This, this is Communi. This is a lot bigger. I forgot the name of this one, but yeah. Those are the two species of hair cap moss that we oh, have. And, okay. And, Indian pipes? You're talking about Indian pipes, yeah. Frank? This is the mushroom that's attached to the roots of Indian pipes. Oh, really? Yep. And, and, and so the Indian pipe... Um, no, they're... they're they're really hot and peppery tasting. Yeah. Get a lot of that in my woods. Yeah, cool. It's like we're in the ocean. We're in a coral reef. Uh, you can make a tea for cold. Sweet fern. Know. Sweet fern, yeah. It's related to bayberry. You know, bayberry candles? Yeah. So it has a similar smell. Okay. Yeah. You don't see those that often, yeah. do you? In, in real Smells poor good. sandy soils. Sweet fern was native in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, before the Ice Age. And mm -hmm. made it through some of the interglacials. Mm -hmm. And then the last glacial period, the Wisconsin glaciation, wiped it out from Europe. Mm. So now it's just in North America. Another one, oak gall. And there's a there's a little wasp, it doesn't have a stinger, but it uses its little, it doesn't sting you, but it uses a little stinger to lay eggs in the oak twig so and lay an egg. So we should not pick that. Well, it's baby is in there. There's a little little wasp grub in there. The, the bright orange and bright reds, those are all called hygrophorus mushrooms. Hygrophorus. They're not edible, but they're, they're yeah, beautiful. Pretty, yeah. Oh, yeah. What these are, the black spots on the lichen, they, they make spore-like structures. This is how they get around from rock to rock. But they're not really spores. All, because the, the lichen is made of a fungus with algae cell, every dot, the little spore-like thing, is only an algae cell with a fungus thread wrapped around it. So picture a pea with a noodle around it. That's kind of what it looks like. <laughs> we got different things going on here. We got this, we got this, we got this. What's, what would... It's like a mountain top. Yeah. Right, so here's the most exposed part that dries out the most. And then you go down in elevation, it gets a little more What's less that? exposed. Right there. This is another kind of moss. Um, I should bring up my moss oh. book. It's a real common one, but I forgot the name. And this is the... the and this is the hair cap. Hair this cap. one I think is called uh, Hypnum, I think is the genus so here. This it's called a hydnum. Hydnum. H y d n u m. Hydnum. Can you see what huh. the top looks like? Is it still good? No, it's, no. you can see it's all wormy. It and doesn't everything. have gills. Yeah. It has like icicles. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that's how you can tell that it's edible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And as far as I know, every hydnum is edible. Is edible. Okay. Yeah. It has pores. See the little holes? Can you see the little tiny holes there? Uh -huh. So this is a bowl eat. Okay. And it's kind of like a, oh, well, like a salt shaker, and the spores come out of the holes. See the top. Yeah, and the top looks like a hamburger bun, so it's easy to oh, identify. Yeah. It's called a bully. Is bully. it always kind of like a brownish color when it's when it's ripe, when it's good, or is it just as it gets? Um... It's always like a hamburger bun. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So how do you tell it's good? Well, well you have to get a good, rotten. really good book. There's one that looks like it, but it's um, a lighter, almost a pinkish, and there's yellow on the stem. And that one's a bitter bowl eat. Mm. And it's, you eat that, that and it's like, yeah. you know, this but, is really good though. But any mushroom, when it starts to rot, you can't eat it. No, no absolutely not. The hawkweed, the native hawkweed. What what is? See, this here. These, I thought these the seeds. hawkweed was just, they had one little head. No, they can have multiple uh, yellow. Oh, really? Yeah. They, they look orange, right? Mm. Well, that's the European one. This is the uh, Canadian, Canadian hawkweed. Canadian hawkweed. Yeah. Oh, hey. They have yellow flowers. Oh, gosh. I don't know what kind they are. They look like. Edible chanterelles, but they're not. I don't so know. They get different kinds. They're here. Are those? Those are two different kinds, aren't they? They're SBMs. Covered bog. Enclosed bog. Yeah. Enclosed bog. So, so this is an older bog because the trees have grown up. Would you? Oh, what kind of mushroom is that? It's all sphagnum moss. It's not wicked, man. It's not. <laughs> yeah. Sphagnum moss. Oh, that's Labrador tea. That's another one we got. Well, there's so much here I got to tell you about. It's okay. So See this? This is sphagnum moss. Or another name is peat moss. Peat moss. So you can buy this in the garden centers. They they mine it up in Canada for for horticulture. Sphagnum is the redwood of the mosses. Look how big that is compared to any other moss. Shoo! And as as the sphagnum grows, the top is alive, 
and the bottom gradually dies. Uh -huh. So if you go farther and farther down, first it turns yellow, uh -huh. then it turns brown, uh -huh. and if you go even deeper, way down, it gets darker and darker, eventually turns black. This is peat. Is that what they burn? Peat yeah, that, this exactly. Well, they don't they use it in the soils then too, right? Like, it, you yes. can buy bags of bags peat. Of peat. You can buy bags in, in the garden center. Fertilized. You can buy bags yeah. of sphagnum, dried okay. sphagnum, okay. and you can buy peat. Okay. And they're mined from bogs. And peat is so it's used as a soil amendment because it holds water. There's no can nutritional value for plants. It's that its uses. Uh, so horticulture, already we mentioned, they make baskets. So if you go to Winter Greenhouse, they have baskets yep, of baskets plants the, with yeah. the peat. Um, is it sustainable? It's, it can be sustainable. There's, there's machines in Canada that, that just cut off the top heads like a lawnmower, like mm -hmm. a giant lawnmower. They cut off the top of the bog mm -hmm. and then it regrows, the peat regrows. Okay. And that's sustainable. It doesn't, isn't sustainable for all the orchids and other plants that grow in the bogs, but it is for the moss itself. Okay. Um, the, the moss traditionally, so let's go way back. Uh, Anishinaabe people, Ojibwe people, use this uh, as a wound dressing. So if an, a warrior got injured, uh, he, would, he would go to a bog nearby and grab a handful of the, the sphagnum and put it on the so wound. So the top, the green part yeah, it's is green like... and wet? Uh, probably the green part, yeah. I'm not sure about the rest of the peat. But mm -hmm. it, it's antibacterial. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it helped prevent helped infection. Heal. Okay. It helped it heal. I know some one of my students mentioned that uh, there was a hospital using it even as recently as the 1920s. They mm -hmm. were still using peat dressings. Mm -hmm. Person. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, that's only, about only one I've heard of. The Native American women the use top it for, diaper. cat for diapering yeah, their babies. The absorbent and antibacterial. The furry antibacterial. part of the cattails. Mm -hmm. um, also for for you know during their periods, oh. right? Mm -hmm. Worked really well. That um, uh, okay, so when you dry it, it, it holds a lot of air, empty air. Mm -hmm. Pioneers would use it for what? Mattresses? Yeah, I'm sure they used it for mattresses. Pillows. So something that Fire, traps fires. air is a what? Insulation. Insulation. Oh, okay. Insulation. Oh, the, the log cabins. This is what they dried and chinked their log oh, cabins with. Oh. Yeah, oh. so oh. This, this was the chinking. I mean, there's log cabins. I saw one that still had it. The Labrador tea has to be able to conserve water, which is an odd thing to say in a bog. But because the ground is cold or even frozen in the spring, they just can't bring water up. Mm -hmm. So the leaves have to be able to prevent water loss. And one of the things is really thick leaves, but if you flip it over, you see this, you see this white wool okay. underneath the leaves. Yep. And that, that's not to keep the plant warm. That is to prevent water loss out of the stomates, the little pores under the leaves. So, so it's like a, it's like a forest. You know how still a forest is on a windy day. You go in the woods and it's calm. It's like a little forest of hairs there that keeps keeps the the air from from carrying away the water from the leaf. Leaves so, fall into the bog. Any debris from the forest around here, the sphagnum grabs onto the nutrients, the potassium and calcium and and. Uh, the phosphorus, whatever nutrients fall in, the sphagnum grabs onto, and it, and by doing that, to, to take those nutrients in, it exchanges hydrogen ions. Mm -hmm. It does a swap. Mm -hmm. Hydrogen ions, H pluses, make the bog more and more acidic. That's why the bogs are so acid. It's because of the sphagnum swapping hydrogen ions for all the good nutrients. Mm -hmm. Well, by grabbing onto the good nutrients, that doesn't leave any for the other plants. They, they can't compete with that. Mm -hmm. So they have to have mechanisms to be able to get their fertilizer because the sphagnum is grabbing everything. Mm -hmm. So they've got a couple of ways to do this. The Heath family, which is all over here, mm -hmm. they live with a fungus on the roots. Mm -hmm. And the fungus rests away nutrients from the sphagnum. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so they, they have association with fungus. So they're like a thief. They in are. partnership. They arm wrestle the sphagnum for the nutrients, yes. Um, when we go into the open bog, we'll see carnivorous plants that mm -hmm. trap insects. Love it here. So this is blueberry. This is that is leather leaf. That's Labrador tea. And mm -hmm. on top over here is another heath family plant called snowberry. Berry. See that white berry? Oh yeah. There's another one. Here's another and snowberry. 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 They're wonderful. See how they look like Tic Tacs? Mm -hmm. They they taste just like like juicy Tic Tacs. I want one. Go for it. Creeping snowberries. There's going to be yeah, more. Did. Every hummock should have snowberries. So and they have little white berries on it. This is the 
sphagnum species that grows in the low spots. Mm -hmm. It has skinny leaves, bright green. And then these two grow up on the old log here in the higher spots, the hummocks. And they have this red species here and this green species. So, so there's three different species. Yeah, but they're not green. ripe yet. I was looking for a ripe one, but oh, they're still snap. green. Another species, one oh, green. Wait, wait, wait. Lemon or tea. What do we got here? Oh, that's a gall. It like one a... is the, the tamarack, which is the, 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 the uh, light green over there. And those turn, those turn golden in the fall, late fall, and lose their needles. Tamarack. The other is black spruce. These are black spruce. Black spruce. And, they, and they come after tamarack. They're a little bit more shade tolerant, and they, they eventually replace most of the tamaracks. This is black spruce? This is black spruce, and they're bog trees. Mm. Um, now, for a seedling, to get a tree seedling to get started in a bog is really tough because the sphagnum, remember, it grows really, really fast and it'll smother it. So the only place a tree seedling can get a start is up on top of one of the hummocks, mm -hmm. which typically is a, a stump or a piece of wood or something that's a little higher so the moss grows slower because it's drier and the seedling can get a start. That doesn't happen very often. So both tamarack and black spruce, they have, they have ways of taking over the bog without having to seed. Uh, so the, the, the black spruce, let's start with the black spruce. Now if you look at this black spruce here, and you go down to the ground, you see all these little ones around it? Yep. Though, that's the same tree. Mm -hmm. These are layers. So as the black spruce grows, the, the branch, notice how black the spruce. branches hang down? Mm -hmm. The lower branches, they hang down in the moss, the tips curve up and grow, and they root. Okay. And so these grow into more black spruce trees, and then they make layers themselves. So these and are just the, the ends of the trees. This is just the branches of the trees yeah, that have layered. Again. You can see them all over. Probably all or most of these black spruce are only a couple of black spruce trees. They've been doing this for hundreds or thousands of years, layering themselves. And that's how they take over a bog. Which is different from aspen who come up by the roots. By the roots. And the tamaracks, that's how they, they, they come up from the roots. Oh. That's the only conifer that we have that sends up shoots from the roots like an aspen does. Oh. So it's real common. It's those single leaves you see all over in the woods. Canadian, uh -huh. Canadian, Canadian, Canadian Mayflower. Canadian Mayflower. Oh. There, there this is a moccasin uh, flower oh. or a pink <laughs> lady slipper. <laughs> this here is an orchid? Yeah, yep. Like yep, yep, yep. That's an orchid. That's what's left of it. It's starting to turn pale and die down. It's the pink lady slipper. Right next to some Labrador tea here. Oh, yeah. Nice combination. Yeah. This is, uh, this is not the, the typical low bush. This is the late low bush blueberry. Late, di late low bush blueberry, which mm -hmm. officially isn't even supposed to grow here. Lichens on the, what kind of tree is this? Uh, black spruce. Oh, oh no, tamarack. Tamarack. Oh, tamarack. Oops, got me there. Black spruce, lichen. Does this kill the plant or? No, no, they, they don't, they don't, they're not parasites. They just have, need a place to grow. They'll grow. It if it's a lady yeah, slipper. Huh? Fertilized. Mm -hmm. So it's left of a lady slipper. Mm -hmm. yeah. And right by it is a cranberry vine. This is a cranberry vine. Oh. You can see it's also related to snowberry and all these okay. other places, all Heath family. So this it's is on its way. a lady slipper. Yeah. Um, historically, see. fires have come through and burned the peat away. Black spruce coming oh, out. No, no, no. Wild pea. Wild pea. Wild pea. But I have a kind that likes rhubarb. You got a rhubarb. slug eating a mushroom rhubarb. here. See that? Where it's eating a mushroom? White lettuce. Native plant, I think. This is a rare plant. It's called a dead nettle. Well, it's a new weed. <laughs> new weed. Mike says he hasn't seen very many others up here. Go for it, Frank. That'd be great. <laughs> ah, video. There's two on me. Uh, no, Canadian mayflower. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, Antonia. Yeah. Antonia. Blue, bead lily. blue bead lily. We saw some of these at the Pepstone, I think. Mm -hmm. And they had actually blue beads. Blue. Yeah. Yep. This is not so deep. Oh, my God. oh, it looks like fun, doesn't it? Underneath yeah. there's probably yellow gills. There's just... another one. Look at that. Yeah, just pick one and look underneath. There should be yellow pores. Well, what do we got here? Yep, it's got pores. See, it's a bull eat. Is that an edible? No. Mm. Oh, I found one over here. Design is beautiful. Open bog here. We're in the open bog. Before we were in a closed bog. And so this is basically the last wilderness in northern Wisconsin that hasn't had machinery in it, nothing, you know, they didn't log much in these. So this is pretty much what you would have seen, you know, 150 years ago. Oh, really? Yeah.
What's this? It's all leather leaf. That's the dominant leather shrub here. Leather leaf. Yeah. Will we see those other plants too? Like Labrador tea or only only in the shade of the um, the the uh, trees there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where are these? Popping up all over. <laughs> That's wild calla. Wild calla. They get the white calla flowers in the summertime. Different species of spagnum. So this is just a plant. They're not a fungus or anything. No, it's, it's a moss. Moss. Sphagnum. Moss. Sphagnum moss. Yeah. How's a moss different from a, like a regular vascular plant? It doesn't have true roots and it doesn't have the vascular system. It doesn't mm -hmm. have a system for bringing up nutrients. Oh. Right there. This is a pitcher plant. So each of those, each of those leaves is like a stomach. You see the water in there? Pitcher plant. It's not just water. It's also digestive enzymes like your stomach for. For breaking down meat. Where does it eat? I'll show picture you. Plants. I'll show you how it works. Eating bugs. Once they got their pictures. Yeah, so you have to be careful. If you pick a leaf, just pick one Eat off the plant. One. Which leaf should we one. take? You want to take? Should we pick this big one? Yeah. Oh, this one's got a hole in it, so that's okay. no good. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, let's do this one. This one has a lot of water and all that. Okay, here's we'll find out what's in there's it. There's one pitcher, and if we had a, oh, I should have brought a jar. We could have dumped it. There's probably yeah. Let's now look, see if there's any critters in there. You see anything moving in there? Probably baby mosquito. There is one kind of mosquito that lays its eggs in pitcher plants and it's here. We oh, found it before. Okay, so you... how's this work? How's it trap bugs? Well, you see the colors, the pattern of the red? Yeah. That attracts the bugs. Plus it may, there's nectaries along the lip here that make sugar. And so that attracts flying insects. So they land on there. You feel the bristles on the lip there? You feel that? Could I have this? Oh, sure. So you, there's these little bristles there. You can see them there, shiny. Mm -hmm. In which direction are they pointing? Uh, like down. Feel it, feel it. Which way are they pointing? They're probably pointing down. 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 So, so when a bug lands there, exactly, they, the bug only can go one direction, which is down. <laughs> now, once it gets down here, feel that, where that ring is down there. What's that feel like? Slime. It's slimy, slippery. Yeah. So the bug is going, whoa, and it falls down into the fluid. Now the water in here is partly rainwater, partly dew, but it also has digestive enzyme, pepsin, what's in your stomach to break down meat. It's the same enzyme you, do, you use in your stomach to break down meat. So this is basically a big stomach. And so it, it, the bug, is, bug falls in before it sinks. The, the plant has something else that it puts in the water, and that's called a surfactant. That is like, oh. like, like dishwashing soap. You ever put a drop of dishwashing soap in the water, stuff won't stand floating on the top, it'll sink down. It breaks that surface tension so that the bug, most bugs when they fall in the water, they stay on top and they're kicking, right? There, they, in here, they, they sink right down. There's no surface tension. And so they sink right down and then the pepsin dissolves them. All that's left of the bug is the, uh, the exoskeleton, the, the, the shell on the outside. The, the plant dissolves everything else and, and, and eats it. Now, why, why does the pitcher plant do that? It's the same reason in the clothes bog that we looked at, why the plants have to be so aggressive in getting nutrients. It's because the moss is so competitive. The moss grabs every nutrient in the bog. So they have to get a way of getting their nitrogen, which is a really important plant nutrient. And protein, which is what meat is, is full of nitrogen. And so that's why the plant needs to, it's one way that plants have to have have evolved to get their nitrogen is by, by eating insects. Uh, the water level, doesn't. no matter how much rain you get, it doesn't change a whole lot on, on the bog like this. So the, the moss goes up as the water? Sure. The whole so bog just lifts could be uh, two, three, five feet of water under here, you're saying? Not anymore. It, this, this part's filled in, but closer to the where the lake is, mm -hmm. that, that still is floating. You've probably mm -hmm. heard of floating bogs. Oh, yeah. Flowages. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so when, they, when they created the Chippewa flowage, for instance, there were bogs, and the whole bog, as, they, as the water level went up from the dam, the whole bog just went up and floated around with the trees, with the tamaracks and black spruce. Hmm, cotton sedge. Out here. Why is it out here? It's a bog plant. Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. Here's another bog plant. This bluish stuff. These here, these are uh, <clears throat> bog andromeda. Which is? Uh, it's another uh, heath family with the, with the fungus, bog andromeda. Or bog rosemary, some people call it. Um, these are the flower buds for next year forming on the ends. It gets little uh, pinkish white bells, kind of like blueberry flowers. Apparel out there, you'll see shrubs that have the same kinds of leaves. Rosemary, a garden, mm -hmm. you know, an herb, yeah. comes mm -hmm. from the Mediterranean where you have hot, dry summers. Mm -hmm. So the leaves look almost identical, 
because of the drought in the summer. Here, we got a drought adaptation again in a bog plant. You have the, the, the sh thick, shiny leaves enrolled to keep water from coming out. And then underneath, there's a, see the white? Oh, yeah. uh, the layer of wax oh. uh, over this. What's this plant called? Uh, bog rosemary or bog andromeda. So it's adapted to drought. Again, the bog can be frozen into summer and the plants have a really tough time taking up water. Sphagnum. The, the, the Latin name, scientific name is Sphagnum rubrum. It's green, red, oh, the species, and here's the red species. And there they mingle together in, in between. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, plant. Kip's got a nice deep Look. hand. Let's, so yeah, if you can one. keep it from flowing out, let's, mm -hmm. let's dump it. Bruce. And eventually, in the absence of fire, this whole, there's another one over there. Yeah. That started. Black it's one tree. Out of it. Here we have these little fellas. And the tamaracks, they found some shelter in there, so there's a few, there's even a white pine in there because it has some shelter yeah. now and they've gotten oh, yeah. started. Yeah, right yeah. in the middle I can see white pine right, uh -huh. right there. Probably won't last very long. Really? Some yeah. what? Somebody's got boats over there? Yeah, somebody built a house over there. Water shield. And water shield's covered with a with a slime layer, mucus layer. Oh, okay. Yeah. So mucus layer in the bottom? On the bottom and the bottom of the leaf, yeah, for protection. Uh oh. It's called, what is it again? Water shield. Water shield. And you only find this in acidic lakes? Yeah. And in lakes that are not acidic, you would find or you might, you might find too. other water lilies. Oh. This compared yeah. to the small cranberry. That's a cranberry plant. No this is the large cranberry. But it only grows along the edge of the water where it, where it gets sunk into the water over winter, just like they do in the cranberry marshes. You don't find it farther away from the water's edge. You can see it's, oh, okay. it's, it's quite a bit. This is the type that grows on the edge of the lake. Of the water, yeah. This is the lake. more of an abog. Mm -hmm. hmm. This is the small cranberry we've been seeing all over. And this is the large cranberry or commercial cranberry that only grows along the edge of the water. But they're both native, right? Yeah. Let's move it. A little bit higher. Taking out of the water. Oh, Can I see my it? butt's getting wet. Can you see the sundew? Mark? Yeah. See. This is a spatulate leaf sundew, and it actually is. See how it's a stalk. It's the carnivorous. Plant. Carnivorous, yeah. How does the, that work? Yeah. Uh, well, if, if it'd be dry, there'd be a, a, a little droplet of dew, which is actually glue, at the tip of each of those tentacles. And the glue has sugar in it. So it attracts bugs. So they come and they, they attract, they smell the sugar, they, they get stuck to it, and then the, those tentacles actually move slowly and wrap themselves yeah. around oh, the bug Sunday. to digest them even more. Probably had something to do with it, but I've never seen anything like that. Wow. Oh, there's a spider in there. Oh. Like, wow. Never saw a spider web like that. Oh, with the holes? Yeah, with the white in the middle like that. Like hmm. spider web. Don't look at that one over there. Just hold them out underneath. Bunch berries. So, so you can, I, yeah. Oh, there you go. Bunch berries. Okay. Oh, neat. <laughs> <laughs> the water in my boots. Because I've been out this long.